You guys are wondering if I ever touch grass. As an avid wilderness hiker, I touch grass quite often, but not so much in Minecraft as I'm always in creative, flying about just barely off the ground. So I clearly need to touch more grass. Hello there, Ray here. I'm on a quest to create an automatic farm for everything in Minecraft. So a touching grass farm. Well, I could just repurpose my auto fern farm and instead just hold the grass inside his farm, which would satisfy both requirements, farming up grass items, as well as actually touching grass. But for every extra grass item that you want, it's going to cost you one bone mill. That's kind of expensive, as you could just use this one bone mill in order to bone mill some grass blocks, and then you end up with tons of grass. And every one of these small grass will produce one item, and these big ones will produce two items. So if we do this, I'll be way more efficient. Instead of the player applying bone mill to the grass block, we can have a dispenser pointing into the grass block and powering it, which will do the exact same thing. So with a small observer clock, we can easily have it constantly bone mill this and produce vegetation all around it. Question is, how big does it actually go out producing grass and flowers? And you can see it's actually a quite large area. It's actually six blocks out from the center in each direction. So if this is our center block where we're going to have a bone mill, well, we're going to have our dispenser underneath of it. So it's not taking up any room here at the top where we're going to place in grass blocks. We'll have it pointing upwards and this actually will still cause it to bone mill it. Now, since we know the dispenser can place grass up to six more blocks in all four directions, we're going to add six blocks onto each of these sides here. Now we could also make this grass block area as big as this one over here. But we run into an issue. That is how we actually can break all these down. If we break them with pistons or water or our fist, we're only going to sometimes get grass seeds. So we actually have to use shears in order to get the items. And no, using shears with dispensers don't work on them. And silk touch tools also don't work. Although you normally can't obtain the tall grass item, you have a 46% chance of actually finding this item inside of a savannah village chest. But that does make it a non-renewable resource. So since we have to use the player holding down left click with shears in our hand, we're restricted to how far the player can actually click on blocks. So if we stand here, we can see we can break one, two, three, four, five blocks away from the player. So despite putting vegetation in a 13 by 13 area, we're only able to actually reach out five blocks, which isn't very good. So let's see if we can move the player back and forth so we can at least do the full length of this, even if it's just five blocks forward. So an easy and efficient way to move the player back and forth is to put them inside of a minecart. So we're going to put our minecart rail system down here. That way if we place the rail in and the minecart in and the player hops in it, you can see that the grass will be right at eye level for us to easily harvest up. But notice us getting inside the minecart actually moves us a little way from the edge. So we're going to end up being a bit further back. This means even if we have grass that goes out a total of five blocks, when we're in survival, we can actually only hit four of them. So it's not really worth us making the farm any deeper than four. So let's go ahead and remove that one and let's fill out the rest of this. If you're using my farms, make sure you give me credit as I put hundreds of hours into these. And if you know of anybody that could use one of them, let them know that Raiseworks has a farm for everything. Now we'll also need the rail system to go the full length on both directions. And let's also continue the rail the full length as well. Now we're a bit close to getting this automated, but we got a problem here and that is our minecart doesn't actually move because we don't have any power rails. So let's switch out this one here with a power rail and let's go in and power that up with a lever. But if we try running the farm now, what's going to happen is our minecart is just going to fly off the edge. So we'll need to have a little bumper here to send the player back. But now the minecart will just get stuck in the corner, so we're going to have to have a power rail that sends the player back. And to power that rail, instead of having a lever, we're just going to use a detector rail because the detector rail will actually power the power rail and send it back. We'll do the same thing on this side. So now the player moves back and forth, but our dispenser is actually not automatically putting out any bone mill. Currently we have it right here underneath of this block. What if we move the dispenser a little bit closer to the center here, like right there? It will actually make it more efficient. This is because the dispenser is more likely to place in grass near it than out at the edges. So now that we have it in the right location, we need to go ahead and find a way to power this. We don't want to have it being powered all the time because if you would just have to break some of the grass, the dispenser would just automatically fill in the area again and you wouldn't get as much grass. So what we want to do is 
have us remove all the different vegetation and then only then does the system bone mill it. We can do this pretty easily just by having the system only activate after the player has swept across the entire thing harvesting it. So when the player reaches the end here and activates the detector roll along with the redstone, we can then activate a new set of grass we planted down, which is going to go into a block and into another torch. We'll use this torch to power this dispenser, but before we do that, we're going to have a dropper that is going to help put in bone mill that's facing up into this dispenser. We're going to also have another dropper that's pointing into that one. That way this torch system not only activates the dispenser, but it also helps push bone mill to refill it. And we could come over here and have a hopper and another one and we'll put a chest here where we can place in our bone mill to keep the system going while we're AFK. If you want, you can hook this directly up to your bone mill farm. I show tons of different bone mill farms in this playlist here. I would recommend using my moss farm. We we'll also need to repower that power rail there, and we'll do this just by placing the lever over here. So now when micro reaches the end, it automatically will bone mill it, and we will want the system to do this going both directions. So we'll want to continue this redstone and mirror it just like it is on that side, but connect it up with this detective rail over here. So now it doesn't matter which side we hit, it will automatically resupply. Let's go ahead and close up that hole there and give this thing a try. You can see now we have a different issue and that is items are popping off and flying all about with some of them even falling outside the farm. Let's go ahead and surround the farm with some blocks. I'm using glass so it's easy to see the farm operating. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on seeing my next crazy farm. Now we're going to do this for these three sides when it comes to this side over here. We can't place blocks directly inside the player's head otherwise he can't operate the shears that he's holding so we're just going to come in with a single layer at this height over here but we do want to fill in this gap that way the items don't end up falling onto the rail so we're going to come in with some slabs to fill up most of it and the player is still able to look underneath of these the next thing to overcome is to actually pick up these items you don't want to use water to wash every once in a while and collect them because that will slow down the farm so let's come in and use some hopper minecarts from underneath to pick them all up so we're going to place a platform down here that is the same size as the grass above. And this will hold our rails. Because the farm produces so many items, we're actually going to have two hopper minecarts moving underneath here. We're going to have one that starts over there in this corner. Have a couple power rails. It's going to move across, kind of zigzag itself around, and then repeat itself on this track. The second one's going to be on this track over here, where it's going to start over here and go around through some power rails and make this little loop. So now we just have to come in and actually power these rails. So we're just going to come in underneath each of these rails and place in some levers. For the power rail that's over here, we can't place a lever directly because they'll power this here. So we'll just go ahead and lower this down by one and now it'll work. Now once we have that set up like this, we're going to come in and swap out this one for a power rail. That way the hopper minecart doesn't get stuck here when it accidentally collides with this nearby one. Now with this rail set up, there is some dead zones like just underneath of this dispenser. It can't pick up those items or like where both these rails go opposite directions, items could get stuck right there. But after the hopper minecart picks up all the items, we need to actually drop them off. So we're going to have a loading station that comes out this direction and we'll have the chest be sitting right over here. One chest like this and another one over here. We're going to have two hoppers pointing into those. Rail system will go up to them on top of it. And then this one will be a power rail. We'll also have a block for it to bump up against. And we're going to detect what's inside the hopper so we know when it's empty and ready to take off. We're going to do this with a comparator that's going to be pointed into a block, which is going to go into a torch, and that's going to go up into a block. And this repeater is set to one delay. It will then push the power into this rail here. Now we'll also need an unloading station for this section over here. We're also going to start it right here in this corner and go two blocks out. Oh, by the way, guys, I just started uploading to my TikTok and Instagram accounts. So make sure to follow me now so you can be in the top 100. Once complete, we just need to make sure that this rail system will allow it so that once the minecart comes back, it will go into there. And then after it comes back out, we want it to go that way. So we're just going to move these rails, break and replace them until it goes that way. And then it returns this way. Now we can watch this thing in action. Notice that it will go a loop all the way around, hit the end, and then come back. And we can place the hopper minecart for this side as well. Now this whole entire rail system does look kind of weird. But the whole idea is that both these minecarts collect about the same amount of area. And they try not to loop back on the same rail twice. That way they minimize the amount of time wasted. 
And the reason why we have two hoppers here to unload is because we want to use as much time getting the items out of the hopper so that I can go back to picking up more items. And with the setup here, it will sit between the two hoppers, unloading much faster than just a single one. So now if we hop in the minecart to give this thing a go, you can see that we are getting the items, they're getting picked up and they're getting stored away. But once again, our shears will end up breaking. Now if you want, you can use a shears that has mending as well as unbreaking on it. So it lasts longer and you can go ahead and repair it so you don't use any iron. You can also hook this farm directly up to like a pigman portal farm so you get XP's while you're running it like I did in this video here. You may notice that we not only get grass, but we also get a chance of having some flowers. Depending on what biome you build this in, this could also be a flower farm. And you don't have to worry about your shears taking durability when breaking out the flowers. Now you could build this in the nether dimension where no flowers would spawn in, but it won't actually help with the rates as the game would just leave in blank areas where it would try to put a flower. So we can easily come in and make a system to actually give us more shears. So what we're going to do is place a dropper right beside this detector rail that's going up, then the one that's going over, and then this is going to have a hopper that is going to pick up the items after they come out and put them back to the system, creating a loop here. We're going to have a trap door over here to keep it separated so items don't fall out. We're also going to have some glass on the other three sides to contain the item that gets thrown out. And now we're going to place in a detector rail right here as well. This is going to lock the hopper so it doesn't immediately pull the item in. This will give the player time to actually pick it up. But you can see that this trapdoor flickers so we can stop that flickering just by replacing this with a block and giving it power. So now all we do is place in some shears in these dispensers here and notice every time the minecart comes past it's going to drop out one shear. It's going to sit there for a little while and then it will get pulled back in again so it won't despawn. This way the player has room to pick it up, he will, otherwise it'll just recycle it. So let's watch this in action, my shear is about to break, my inventory actually just fills up with grass. We can actually get rid of this grass, if not only we hold down left click, but if we hold down right click as well, we're going to eventually plant this grass and it's going to free up our inventory. We could accidentally pick up some seeds, so it's best to have some inventory slots that are dedicated to picking up seeds just for this instance. And that way you can replenish the shears so you can put a bunch in there and AFK for a long period of time. You can use a similar replenishing system for my fern farm. So once it does break, you can use up that fern that falls in your main hand until you free it up again so you can pick up some new shears. Over time you will lose hunger, so you'll have to eat every once in a while if you're on hard difficulty so you don't die. Or use a regen beacon. Or you could put food in your offhand, and that way your player will automatically eat. This only works for job addition. So to run the farm for a long period of time, you want to hold down left click to break, and also right click to get rid of extra vegetation so you can pick up the shears. And then press F3 plus T, and when the screen comes up, release your mouse buttons. Once complete, now the game will automatically hold down those buttons that you had held down, allowing you to AFK without having to do anything. Let's watch it do the replenishing. And it automatically picks up the shears and continues. The amount of grass items it produces is 19,000 per hour, plus whatever flowers you have in your biome. Now see how I designed an automatic farm for almost every item in the game of Minecraft with this playlist here. Or me trying to get everything in Minecraft, but 99% of the world is missing. We've reached 360,000 subscribers, so thank you all who helped. I really appreciate all the support on the Farm Everything series. We're getting very close to reaching 100%. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.